students and welcome back to study room so today the topic that we are going to be covering is lens so in the last video we talked about the phenomenon of refraction right and we learned how light bends towards the normal or away from the normal when it moves from an optically rarer to an optically denser medium or from an optically denser to an optically rarer medium now we are going to use that phenomenon and we are going to see what its application is in daily life okay so have you ever asked someone or have you ever heard someone asking someone who wears spectacles said what is the power of your spectacles or how much is the power of the spectacles you are wearing now what is that power that they are talking about the power is basically the power of the lens so if you have ever looked through a spectacles or if you have a spectacles you know that it helps you basically see clearly right have you ever thought of why that is what is it between that frame do you think it's just normal glass between the frame it is not in the frame it is actually some specific lenses that are made to suit your eye type okay so now we're going to see what are the different types of lenses okay let's go so first we're going to see what exactly is a lens okay we're going to read in the ppt that is given here and then i'll explain it to you okay so it says read with me here lens is a transparent material bound by two surfaces of which one or both surfaces are spherical forms a lens this means that a lens is bound by at least one spherical surface in such lenses the other surface would be plane so what does it mean basically lens is made up of a transparent material which is glass right and it has either one or both spherical surfaces now what are spherical surfaces because we have studied spherical mirrors so i'm sure you would know what spherical surfaces are spherical surfaces are basically surfaces that aren't plane or surfaces that aren't straight they are either bent like this inwards or bent like this outwards okay so a lens is basically made up of glass or a transparent material which is glass of which either one surface or both the surfaces are spherical now you know that a transparent material do you remember when we were doing types of mediums the transparent medium we had learned about what was it does it let light propagate through completely does it let light propagate through partially or not at all the transparent medium lets light propagate or transmit through it completely right so that means if light is coming from one end of the lens and the lens is made of glass or transparent material light would be able to come out of the other side right or the other end of the lens like in a mirror can the light pass through a mirror no right because it's a reflecting surface it bounces back from the mirror but in case of a lens light passes through and now we're going to look at some lenses so this line that says one spherical surface or both the spherical surfaces would be more clear to you okay let's go so here we have two types of lenses basically the first is a convex lens or a converging lens and the second is a concave lens or a diverging lens or a diverging lens now why is a convex lens called a converging lens and why is a concave lens called a diverging lens all of that we going to just see but for now i just want to make the definition of lens i just want to make the definition of lens clearer to you okay so we had said that it either it is a transparent material so you can see this is glass even if it doesn't look transparent in the picture this is made of glass so it is completely see through like in your spectacles okay and the second thing that it said was either one of the surfaces is spherical or both so in this case i'm just marking 1 2 3 and 4 in case 1 is are both the surfaces spherical or is just one surface spherical here both the surfaces are spherical here are both the surfaces spherical or just one both very good here one or both only one right because look at this surface this surface is plane this surface is not spherical right spherical means it is like curved like this like a moon shape like a crescent moon shape curving outwards or going inwards right 
So this side is a plane side. So here there is only one spherical surface. In this one again there is only one spherical surface. Okay. Now if we look at the diverging lenses or concave lens. And here the converging lens is a convex lens. Okay. Now if we look at our concave lens, here are both the surfaces spherical. In the first case, I am going to again mark this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So here, are both the surfaces spherical or is just one surface spherical? Here, both the surfaces are spherical. So we write both. Here, is just one surface spherical or both the surfaces are spherical? Both the surfaces. Here, if you notice, they are going somewhat inwards, right? Here, both or one? Only one because this side, as you can see, is plane. Here, both or one? Again, one because this side is plain. So now I hope the definition of lens is clear to you. So basically a lens is a transparent material bound either by two spherical surfaces or just one spherical surface and when only one of the surfaces is spherical then the other surface is plain. Now how do we name these lenses? Do you see these names written here? It says biconvex lens, convex lens, plano convex lens and a positive meniscus. So, what are these different types of lenses? In this case of a convex and a biconvex, you can see that they look pretty much the same, don't they? But if someone is really good at spot the difference, can they tell me what is actually the small difference between these two, the biconvex and the convex lens? Can you notice something? Okay, so if you have noticed, excellent, good observing skills but even if you haven't don't worry it is a very small difference so even if you didn't notice it's not a big deal so here look at this this line can you see this can you see where my cursor is this line that passes through the middle of the convex lens or the through the middle of any lens is kind of like the principal axis in case of a mirror okay but we don't call it the principal axis all the time. We just call it the optical center of the optical central axis of the lens. You can call it that. Okay. So this basically in the case of a biconvex lens divides the lens into two equal halves. Can you see if I draw this line? I don't know if it's visible to you and I draw this line. These two small lines that I have drawn this one and this two. Can you see these two small lines? are equal to each other. That means that that line, the kind of the principal axis or the optical axis divides the biconvex lens into two equal halves, right? Because these two lines or basically the distance of the edge of the lens from the center or from the central axis is equal. But come to a convex lens. Here, this is the line. This is the central line. And now tell me, is this distance equal to this distance this distance that i have drawn and this distance compare it are they equal or is the right side distance a little more than the left hand side distance it is right it's slightly more you can see now if i erase my what i have drawn here now that i've told you you would be able to see that in the first lens in the biconvex lens the central axis actually divides the lens into two equal halves or the distance of each of the lenses edges from the central axis is equal, right? But in the case of a convex lens, that is not the case. Here in a convex lens, what is happening? The distance of the central axis from the edges of the both sides, the both of the surf, the distance of that central axis from both the surfaces, both the spherical surfaces is not the same. So, now we know what the difference is between a biconvex and a convex lens, okay? In a biconvex lens, the distance 
of the axis from each of the edges of the lens or you can basically say the axis divides the lens into two equal parts and in the convex lens that is not the case both the convex can, lens can have different radius basically okay and how do we name these lenses this one that you see here plano convex lens basically here it is a bulging out surface right i've just drawn it a little extra but here you can see that this surface is a little bulging out so go back to what we studied in spherical mirrors when the surface is bulging out what do we call it we call it convex right and here the left hand side it is plane so what do we call it we call it plane o convex the plane comes first and the convex comes after okay so this could also be placed like this if even if this mirror if this lens is placed like this it doesn't matter it doesn't become convex o plane lens so nothing like that it's just named like that if one is plane and the other is convex surface then we call it a plano convex lens okay and this is called a positive meniscus you don't need to know about that right now you only need to know about the biconvex convex and the plano convex these are of more importance to you okay now if we come to biconcave lens this is the same thing so here what can we see this again the middle axis this central axis the distance of the central axis from the edges this is actually this actually looks like this okay the straight lines at the edges you can ignore that it is actually supposed to look like this this is your concave lens okay it is supposed to look like this and this is the line that goes through the middle of it so what happens is in a biconcave lens this optical axis actually passes right through the middle of the lens and the radius of each of the spherical surfaces is equal just like biconvex lens but in a concave lens just like in a convex lens that is not true now here also you can see that the distance of each of the edges of the spherical surfaces from the central axis is it same or is it different no right one of them is some it's like this right if this is the central axis then one of them is much closer and the other one is much farther it's somewhat like this right so this distance and this distance isn't equal so that is a concave lens and again like a plano convex lens when one side is plane and the other side is a concave surface it is known as a plano concave lens and we just learned what a concave lens is and negative meniscus is just the opposite of the positive meniscus okay that also you don't need to know you just need to know what it looks like it's not actually a part of your syllabus okay now we know what are the different types of lenses moving on we're going to study the converging action of a convex lens so now we have, we know that when both the surfaces are convex surfaces it is known as a convex lens in your studies we are using by convex lens but by convention we just call it convex lens in, instead of a biconvex lens so you don't have to get confused we just studied that biconvex and convex is different and in your book we always say a convex lens convex lens but it is a special case of a convex lens where the distance of the optical axis is the same from both the surfaces okay so what we are actually using is a biconvex lens only but we just call it convex lens okay now a lens may have two spherical surfaces bulging outwards if it is bulging outward that means it's a convex lens such a lens is called a double convex lens why double because both the surfaces are spherical if the one of the surfaces was plane it wouldn't be called a double convex lens it would be a plano convex lens okay so it is thicker at the middle as compared to the edges what does that mean so if i look at this figure that i have drawn or i look at this figure that is given to me right here you can see that this this part or if you come back to my figure this part is much wider than these parts at the edges right so it kind of looks like a boat right like it's much thicker at the middle compared to the edges so it kind of tapers at the end or it kind of narrows at the end and it is thick or wide in the middle right 
Now convex lens converge light rays, hence they are also called converging lens. So you remember that we said that convex lens are also called converging lenses. This is the reason why. Because when rays are coming from infinity or when rays are coming parallel to each other, the action of the convex lens is such that it converges the rays to meet at the focus point. Okay. So now if I talk about the phenomenon of refraction happening here, it might be a little confusing to you why this ray that is coming like this is able to pass through the lens straight, right? So now let me explain how refraction takes place through a lens and then I'll tell you why we represent it like this, okay? So here we have our lens. So here we have our lens. Okay. This is our principal axis. If a ray is coming from here, now think about it like this. This is air and this is what? This is glass. So has air got a high refractive index or has glass got a high refractive index? Now remember that table that we did. You don't need to remember the values but you should remember the placement of things, right? So air is like at the top. That means least refractive index. Then Somewhere there is water, glass and at the end there is diamond. So you know that anything has more refractive index than air, right? So when the light goes from air to glass, is it going to bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Think about it. From an optically rarer medium to an optically denser medium it is going. That means it is, it is going to go into a denser medium. So it is going to decrease in velocity so it's going to be like oh I'm tired so I'll cover a smaller angle right so it bends towards the normal so now at this point we draw a normal okay so this would have been the original path of light the light would have wanted to go like this straight if the lens wasn't there right but because of the lens what happens this light bends towards the normal like this was its original direction so it goes somewhere here like this okay now again at this point draw the normal somewhere like this right if the light if this wasn't there if the lens wasn't there the light would have gone like this right but because there is a lens there now the light is going from glass to air optically denser to optically rarer so it's going to have so much energy, it's going to be like, oh, I'm so happy, I'm going to cover a bigger angle. So it bends away from the normal. So it instead of going somewhere here, it goes somewhere here, right? So it reaches this point. Now, this is the same phenomenon that is happening when we represent it like that. But just by convention, it is just the standard way of noting, drawing the ray diagrams in case of a lens is that we only show refraction at that central axis. We don't show refraction conventionally at the surfaces. Okay. So that is why you can see that at this point, point A and at this point, point B, even though light is changing its medium, here it is going from air to glass, right? And here it is going from glass to air but it is not changing its direction at point A and point B right so if you, even if that confuses you you should just know that this is actually this draw this figure that I have drawn is actually the path that the light ray is following but because of some standard notations and convention this is how we show it we only show the refraction at the this central axis okay I hope that is clear now moving on now we are going to study the diverging action of a concave lens, okay? So we are going to use the same concept that we used. I am just going to show it using a figure. Actually how the refraction is taking place so that you aren't confused. And then you are going to use the same thing that I just told you that even though we know that refraction is supposed to take place when light goes from air to glass and glass to air, we just don't show it in the diagram because that's the standard way of showing it. But I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to show the refraction to you right now at each surface. So you know that I'm just not lying to you and that is not just the light rays path. Okay, I'm just going to prove it to you that actually in case of a 
concave lens the rays are diverging or they go in different direction as i just showed you in case of a convex lens i showed you that a ray coming from infinity comes down and meets the principal axis so similarly if we took another ray there the ray would come and meet at the same point as the focus so what does a convex lens do it converges rays so if you remember in case of a convex mirror was a convex mirror diverging or was it converging do you remember when we said when we defined the principal focus of a convex lens we said that the point from which the rays coming from infinity appear to diverge so what was the convex lens do convex mirror doing in that case it was diverging the rays but convex lens does the opposite it converges the rays so this is something that you can use to remember because if you remember your convex mirror and you remember okay in a convex mirror the rays used to diverge and then we used to retrace them and make them meet at the focus so you can just as a small uh like a small tip this is for you that you can just use this to remember okay in case of mirror a convex was diverging so in case of lens a convex is converging just to keep this in your mind so that you don't get confused okay now i'm going to show you the ray diagram in case of a convex concave lens okay so here we have a concave lens now a light ray coming like this let me take it a little more down a light ray is coming like this okay here refraction takes place we draw the normal this is the part of the surface that we have to draw a normal on so we draw the normal perpendicular to it so somewhere here that looks at 90 degree kind of right so now it is going from air to glass that means optically rarer to optically denser so it bends towards the normal so this was the original path of light right so it would bend towards the normal that means would it go here or would it go here it would go upwards right it would bend towards the normal so it would go somewhere like this great now again at this point i draw the normal but this time the surface that i have to use to draw the normal is this surface so where would the normal lie somewhere like this right again i think about the refraction phenomenon it is now light is going from optically denser to optically rarer so much more energy it is happy it can move freely so bend away from the normal or towards the normal it bends away from the normal so if this was the original like look at this this light was going like this so it would have gone like this if the there was no change in medium and if refraction wasn't taking place but light doesn't travel in this direction it bends away from the normal so if this is your normal would light bend be bending away from it if it went here or would it be bending away from it if it went here this is the original path away and this is the normal right here this is your normal so away from it would be at a greater angle right so it would go upwards so i'm just going to remove all of this and you know that this somewhere like this was the original path so it would go somewhere like this so can you see what has the convex concave lens done similarly if i take a ray like this again it would go a little bit like if we draw the normal here it bends towards the normal like this again a normal here it bends away from the normal so somewhere like this so what has the concave lens done it has basically two rays coming like this it has diverged the rays and if you think back to the mirror what did the concave mirror do the concave mirror actually converged the light rays again you can use this to remember oh the concave mirror used to converge light rays so ma'am told us this is just a little trick for us to remember that the concave lens actually does the opposite it diverges the light rays okay so similarly as i told you in case of a convex lens even though refraction is taking place like i just showed you in the above figure we show it from this optical axis okay we show it like this we show ki okay light goes straight through this lens although it is not but by convention we take it like this and we know this is a converging lens so light goes like this now look we have not shown refraction at this point and this point 
I know that is what I am telling you. That is the convention. But look at the direction of the light rays. It is still the same. So in your head, you need to know if the concave lens is a diverging lens. So you know, light ray coming like this goes away from the axis, and light ray coming like this goes away. So basically, diverging light rays and and in your head, you know, okay, we drew the ray diagram. We know that actually at these points, one, two, three, at these points, these four points for these two rays, refraction is taking place. But how do we show it? We only show it at this one point, at the center, only here, at this point, this point, this point. Okay, only this point, we show the bending of the light rays. That is the convention that we take in case of in case of lens, okay? So here, we can just read that a double concave lens is bounded by two spherical curved inward surfaces because that's what we have been doing from the starting. We had said concave means caving inside. So look at this. Here it is caving in, caving in. In case of a convex lens, bulging out, bulging out. This is our convex lens, okay? But what is the difference between the concave and convex lens? They are both shaped spherical but can you look at this concave lens and tell me is it thicker at the ends or is it thicker in the middle look at this distance and then look at this distance or this distance it is much thicker at the edges but a convex lens is it thicker at the edges or in the middle it is thicker in the middle, right? So, when you draw the diagrams of these two, you would get to know where, which lens is thicker. Okay? And we also learned why is it called a diverging lens. Okay? Now, we move on. Now, this is an activity for you. If you can get a concave lens or if you can get a convex lens anywhere, this would be a very interesting activity. Same thing as you did with same thing that you did with the concave mirror. You remember you had held a mirror and a piece of paper and you had tried to focus the image of the sun on the paper and the paper had burnt or just started to smoke. It's the same thing because you remember in the case of mirrors, which mirror is a converging mirror? The concave mirror is a converging mirror. So we can only try to burn a paper if we want to just focus all the light from the sun at one point. So what do we need to do? Do we need to converge or do we need to diverge the light rays to get one small point of all the light rays? We need to obviously converge it. If it's diverging, all the rays are going in different direction. Would you get one small point where all the rays meet? No, right? So that is why you needed a converging mirror in that case. And here you need a converging lens. So which lens is a converging lens? A convex lens is a converging lens. So when you try to hold a piece of paper and you try to take the lens closer or like a, you take it far, you bring it close and you try to stop at one point where the sun is just a little dot and you hold it there for some time, you'll see that the paper starts to burn. Why is that? It is the same action that was happening in case of a concave mirror that the convex lens is basically focusing all the light from the sun at that one small point. Okay, so now let's read. If you hold a convex lens in your hand and direct it towards the sun and you focus the light from the sun on a sheet of paper and you obtain a sharp image of the sun, what happens? The paper begins to smoke. Now, let's see why that happens. This happens because the rays that were coming from the sun are converged by that lens at that small point and it obtains a sharp bright spot and that bright spot you see is actually the real image of the sun. Okay. And because of the concentration of all the sunlight at this one small point, the paper starts to burn. Basically, so much heat is being concentrated at that one small point. Okay. You should all try it. It is a very interesting activity. Now, next thing that we're going to be studying is the optical center. So, the optical center is nothing but just the midpoint of the lens. Like we learned in the case of a mirror, what is the middle point of a mirror? It's the pole, right? It's the central point in the mirror. Now, in case of a convex lens, if I draw a convex lens, very badly drawn, I'll just draw it again for you. Yes, much better. So if we draw a convex lens like this, and like this I said was the axis. 
so here if this is your principal axis this point that lies right in the middle of this optical axis is known as o or the optical center okay and in case of a concave lens where does it lie same way if this is your lens and this is your middle axis and this is your principal axis then this point which is basically the middle of the optical axis or the central axis is called the optical center so as your ppt says that the central point of a lens is its optical center okay so now what is the significance of this optical center and how does it come into play all of that we are going to study when we study the image formation and ray diagrams in the case of lens in the next class okay students so today what did we learn we learned about the different types of lenses we learned what are they called if it's both the surfaces are convex it's a biconvex lens and we learned that we usually don't say biconvex every time we we say a convex lens and the lens that we are using is a biconvex lens only okay then we learned what is a plano convex lens and a plano concave lens and then we saw and then we saw that a concave lens acts as a diverging lens actually and a convex lens acts as a converging lens okay and then we also said that even though we know that each of the points at the interface of the two media you remember what i said interface interface is basically the a common boundary between the two mediums so at the interface where light is entering from air to the lens and leaving the lens to the air refraction has to take place but we don't actually show it conventionally in the ray diagram we make we only show refraction where at this central optical axis okay that is something that you have to keep in mind because next class we are going to do the ray diagrams okay come revise with all of your topics and i hope you like this video Thank you students and take care